Why has the government not accepted your offer, your brilliant offer, by the way, and well done for making it, to treat people? Difficult to know. We love the NHS, our NHS, whatever you want to call it. The problem is the way the command structure works is very complex, local versus central. So it's appealing. For, for us, we have four big cancer centres. They're not full because we've only just opened some of them. And as we've got capacity, why not do it not for profit for NHS patients to clear the backlog of cancer? Uh, it's just so difficult to talk. We've talked to literally hundreds of people within the NHS management to try and get things structured. The doctors say, fantastic, let's just do it. But it's not so easy. It's a, a difficult thing. There is something called a framework agreement that we have, and we are treating NHS patients, but we can do a real big scale, just like COVID, let's do it for cancer. Let's really put the pressure on, clear the backlog, and then we'll be back to normal. That's the problem we've got. And, you know, it's the same for hips. It's the same for uh, cataract operations. We can clear this backlog. Sitting back and saying we might be able to do it by 2024 or 2025 is hardly a positive way of handling the whole thing. We've got to do it now. And for cancer, we have no time. The patients have no time. That's the thing, Carol. I love your ambition. I love how you want this to be a great national effort. But to me, it feels as if the NHS as ever is caught up in its bureaucracy and in its red tape. Absolutely. We spend more time talking about equality and diversity than about oh. getting the job done. The airlines don't do that. They want to sell you a seat. They don't care who sits in the seat. We should be the same. I don't care where someone with cancer comes from. They need treatment. We need to give it to them. Let's not spend away days discussing it. Let's just get on with the task in hand. And I'm afraid that's the problem in the system. And most of my colleagues of my age are disillusioned with it. The young guys come in full of bright ideas and, and somehow they get welded down by the whole system. We've got to change it. We've got to do something different for the sake of future cancer patients. I know, and there has to be a way, Carol, to better integrate these sorts of offers or sensible initiatives from the private sector, because the NHS is proving that it can't do it all. You're right. The private sector can be very imaginative. We can't be so... The NHS can't be so imaginative. And that's the whole problem. We've got to change things. No, I completely agree. So what would be your message, Carol, to government about your specific offer? I think let's get a result. Let's get talking about it. We're not talking about it enough. Um, we've been up to number 10, down through various, the whole food chain of management in the NHS. It's like a sponge, lots of people, different levels. We've got to get to the decision makers and actually move forward. So the message is, let's just get on with it. People, months and months are going by and cancer is growing. We know the patients are out there. The NHS's own estimate is 34,000 people. Uh, there almost certainly are more cancer patients there that have not yet been diagnosed. They need treatment. Let's just get on with it. Let's just get on with it. That is the perfect message to end with, Carol Sakura. And my message to anyone listening, any of those bureaucrats, in NHS England, just take up this man's offer. Cut the red tape. We're in a national cancer emergency. There isn't another moment to waste.